Hey everyone, I'm Alfred, and welcome back to Castlevania, specifically Castlevania 2. Uh, before we get started, I want to talk about something. So this is, of course, the direct sequel to Castlevania 1. And by direct, I mean like it takes place like two or three years afterwards. Uh, this is the box art of it. It's really good. I want to point out that the whip is shaped like a 2. That's very clever. I want to mention this little thing here. That's a uh, Dracula, you know. I mean, I'm sure you know him. And I'm sure lots of people know this as well. But, um... This is the art for Ravenloft. You know, D&D &D module, the one based off of Curse of Strahd. We'll just compare these two. Hmm. 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 Good job, Konami. Um, I also want to mention, before we really get started, this is the only thing where Simon is ever presented as blonde. Um, normally Simon is drawn like a barbarian, this guy. Yeah. This is his, um, sprite from Smash, or not sprite, but this is his design from Smash Brothers. It's based off of Castlevania 4's Simon. Um, But also, this is the box art of Castlevania 1. This is a thing that Konami does that I really don't like about a lot of their box arts with all this fucking gray on it. Look at how much space is being wasted, you know? But yeah, Big Barbarian Simon is usually canon. Um, this is weird, but I guess it makes sense. Uh, there are two other designs. One is the weird blonde design, but turn into an aviator pilot because of some reason in the cartoon, um, in Captain and the Game Master, which is not great for canon. Um, for one, it makes Mega Man blue. You know, it makes sense because he's the blue bomber, right? Wrong. They drew him fucking green. The blue bomber is somehow drawn green in Captain and the Game Master, so... Um, we're also not going to talk about the time that they got, they let the Death Note, uh, artists get their hands on it. But at one point, Ay Ayami Kojima, um, one of the artists for Castlevania, managed to get her hands on Simon and redesigned him like this. I've never seen a Bishonen Barbarian before. This is very interesting. Um, and all the red on it really does remind me of Simon. So what if we just made it very small and put it over here? Maybe here. <laughs> anyway prologue step into the shadows of the hell house you've arrived back here on castlevania on business break the curse of the evil count dracula so when you start you start for whatever reason it's starting me at player three all right we're here so already this is not different in terms of controls you still jump and whip but everything else is about different. So I want to get in here before we even start. I'm going to pause. You may see here, this is T. That is short for time. I'm going to take Baby Simon off. I love him, and I love that design, but... Anyways, this is short for time. Not for how long we've been playing. This game has a day-night cycle. Which is very weird, because this is a NES game. Usually for a day-night cycle, you'd think of, you know, something like Morrowind or something for the original Xbox, maybe a PS2. If you're really going to go back in time, uh, Ocarina of Time has one, and Majora's Mask, of course, is one of the most important ones in all the video games. But yes, this is one of the first games to ever have a day-night cycle. And what's more, if you beat the game in seven days, you get the good ending. If you beat the game in two weeks, you get the middle ending. And if you beat it in any longer span of time, you get the bad ending. Um, normally, I really don't like putting stringent time on beating a game, on playing a game. Um, it's something that they do in Bethesda's Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall that I really, really disagree with. I've mentioned it before. Um... Oh god, you can see the sun. That's why I normally have that thing up. Anyway. Um, but yes, I don't like the... I don't agree with the idea of having a time limit to play a game, usually. But in this case, it's fine. Majora's Mask does it the best, because you can just reset it, get it going again. 
Um, but in this, the game is actually really short. And if you were a kid, you would just blow through this, you know, in like a couple of weeks and then be like, well, the ending was pretty bad, but I'm poor, so I'm going to play another game. So or I'm poor, so I don't have another game. So let's play this one again. Oh, dang. If I do it faster, the ending's better. I wonder if I can do it even faster. Um, a lot of people don't like this game. That's kind of, I should probably talk about this while we're moving, but, um, E's experience and L is level. This game is an RPG. Not, you know, in that you have stat development, but you just get a higher level. And we have 50 hearts. In the last game, hearts are ammunition for sub weapons. In this game, sub weapons have no ammunition. Want to buy holy water? In this game, hearts are money. So, in addition to hearts already not being the thing that level up your health, or increase your health, rather, hearts now don't even do that. This is Bloody Tears. It's one of the most iconic Castlevania songs of all time. See, so yeah, a lot of people don't like this game. But as it happens, that was actually kind of a modern take on it. There we go. Most people at the time liked the mystery and how weird this game feels and like the weird way it asks you to do things. I kind of feel that Castlevania, you have to be ready to whip the guys as they jump at you. I kind of feel like Castlevania 2 is truly the first Dark Souls. Because when we talk about Dark Souls... Oh god, there we go. We usually think of things like crushing difficulty. Um, bosses, Metroidvania, stuff like that. But one thing that I really identify with Dark Souls is really weird side quests and areas and locations. What a horrible night to have a curse. So yes, we've hit the first night. Enemies now take twice as many whip hits to kill, or rather the health is doubled. damage boost there. That one's free, you can have it. This coming up is kind of a pain in the butt. Especially since you can't kill that guy in one now. But we can also throw. But considering we have a whip, we don't really need to worry about that. So... Yeah, to my knowledge, the... thing of like not liking this game is actually a little more modern. A lot of people did like it when it came out, because they enjoyed the mystery. Or so I've been told. And disliking it is something more modern. So here we've gotten to the first mansion. Mansions are this game's equivalent of dungeons like in a Zelda. And you may think that there's nowhere to go. But as it happens, there's one of those partially trans like partially movable blocks, you know. Directionally solid platforms, things that you can move in from one side, but not the other. So you can jump through the top, and you jump on this invisible platform and land on it. And then it carries you up and down. Oh god. But yes, this is kind of weird to do. And of course, if you fall in the water, you'll die instantly. Like, I saved myself. I didn't know you could do that. So you may notice that we've gotten 23 EXP. Or 23E, rather. I believe you only get E. Oh, God. Well, that's us dead. Uh, to my knowledge, you only get E for... <gasps> you only get E for picking up hearts. I'm not sure if it's for attacking enemies. Um, I also want to mention... You may notice that instead of the crippling, dramatic... Uh, continues and game overs we got in the original Castlevania. Uh, dying spawned me right back where I died. In this game, the punishment is far more severe. I also want to mention how extreme this game is getting with its um, tone already. You can see those are hanging corpses. 
This is a Nintendo game, ladies and gentlemen. They just put that in here. See, I think you only get XP when you pick up a heart. Um, so, as you may have surmised by my talking about the system while the menu was open, time does not move while in a menu, naturally. But there's also this to consider. Time does not move while in a mansion. So you can use mansions to grind. They're in fact the best place to grind. Now I vaguely remember where to go here. Um, these blobs are some of the most glitchy enemies I've ever seen in a video game, by the way. That guy deals way more damage than anyone else does just because. Oh god, he's back. Please go away. What is he doing? Oh god, I've never seen this happen. This wasn't in my training. So if I die, I burn a life, as you do. Uh, but if I game over because I run out of lives, I lose all of the hearts that I have. So naturally, I want to avoid that. Well. Yeah. But the thing is, you still get spawned right back where you died. But we're back down to nothing again. So yeah, for whatever reason... Hearts. The XP that hearts give you is the heart's value minus one. I'm not entirely sure why that is. But it means that you'll level up slower than you get money. And yeah, as you can see, holy water is just free to spam now. Yeah. Um, but it's also nowhere near as good. So you may see that that fella just went straight through that block. Or holy water does as well. It's because the block really isn't there. Doesn't that just to screw you? So I know that I'll have to grind off screen at one point. I just don't know when it will be. And I'm kind of thinking I might have to do it here. This game has a lot of grinding, which is another thing that's bad about it. Although I do really want to say, there's a lot of stuff in this game that I really like. Weird, it's a weird game. I'll say that much for free. And there's a lot of things in it that aren't done as well as they could have been. But there's a lot good going on. For example, I love the look of those little blue skeleton sprites with their little sword and shields. I like that Simon has this big, good, like, red and white. And then the backgrounds have a lot of green and black. It helps them to stand out. This guy's a problem. So in addition to... Oh god. In addition to the bones uh, hurting you, they leave a little flame on the ground that can kill you even after you've killed the skeleton. That didn't hit him? So yeah, those guys are problems. How much do we have? We have 34. So yeah, grinding for money is kind of a thing in this game. You never need to grind for levels, but it does make it a lot easier. But yeah, grinding for hearts is mandatory. <laughs> I'm almost sorry to say. Thank 
Thank you. Those little, those little blobs, man, they get you. Um. See, so here's the thing. I want to pause it so I can grind, but I know that if I pause it, I'm I'm going to have to start the next episode like ready to go do the next mansion. Oh yeah, I can catch everyone up on the plot some more. So as Simon got killed, uh, as Simon killed Dracula last game. Stairs, man. Simon killed Drac last game. We all remember. Um, and then Dracula turned into that weird monster, uh, affectionately called the Cookie Monster. That is not Dracula's true form, although he has done that in a few games. Um, that is apparently a curse embodied, and Simon released it. That is Dracula's curse. Now, ironically, I would argue that while this game is about Simon's quest, yes, I would say that the more interesting thing is, ooh, 50, um, Dracula's curse. Ironically, Castlevania 3 is called Dracula's Curse. But Dracula's Curse, you know, the curse that got released, is why when night comes, monsters come out. And you can actually see that in the Castlevania anime. Uh, this guy asks me to invest in an oak steak. In a world where Dracula's taken over, it kind of makes sense that you would buy stuff like garlic and oak steaks from, like, a shady background dealer. And this guy's hiding out in a mansion because, God... So you can see we've lost all of our money spending it, but we now have the oak steak. We'll save that, though. We still have the XP, um, which is good. I will grind all my way out of the mansion, I've decided. That will allow me to... do what I needest to be done. So yeah, this is where Castlevania really started to develop its lore, I would say. Shabooms. God, I really do like this game. I threw it on the wrong one. Damn it. So now I've got to jump all the way back. There we go. Yeah, some of these blocks are fake. Because, you know. Usually they don't put, um... Wait, where do I go from... Here. Oh my god, that slime. Taking too soon. <laughs> Bro. Crap. Yep, it's all gone. Luckily, again, this is a little Dark Souls. But we do still have our, um... Items. Oh god, that was a really bad jump. I'm not gonna save Scum like I did with, um... Castlevania 1. Because that was particularly cowardly, and this game is not... is nowhere near as hard. Oh god! Bro. <laughs> I love the design of these tridentsmen. I don't know what their deal is, but they're interesting. Oh, Lord. Yeah, this game's very hard. Of course, by going away, we'll get more of this. If you can kill that guy before he makes himself a problem, it's a lot easier for everyone involved, but that's a luxury we don't uh, always necessarily have access to. Oh yeah, this game has two pauses. It has the pause that just stops everything on screen. Damn. You know, maybe I will do a little grinding off screen. Um, I've been Alfred. This has been Castlevania 2. 
Oh god. Frame rate. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, bye.